take a look at the DRBFM worksheet. As you can see here, uh, the worksheet is mainly consisting of a part that's dedicated to problem visualization. Then you have the part that's dedicated for problem finding and eventually the problem resolution or problem solving part. So you will have a part that's dedicated for change points and a part for functions, another part for failure modes, root cause and effect to the customers and the level of priority for that effect. Then you have the design steps taken either to create the part or to do the change or even design steps taken in order to avoid any kind of predicted problems. Then eventually, uh, as we said, after going through the design review with the experts, then we will take recommended actions out of these meetings and uh, those meetings called multi-divisional design reviews. So basically you will take recommended actions regarding design um, or an, an evaluation process. So you can uh, decide what items to reflect in design, what items to reflect in evaluation and what items to reflect in the whole process as well. So DRBFM worksheet is designed to help you visualize the changes in both the part itself and the part environment in the same time. So you will study the surrounding parts as we discussed and surrounding systems around your part or your assembly and the usage conditions, how you're going to use that part or that product um, in the real world and with the real customers. Then secondly, you uh, will use that worksheet to help you thinking carefully and deeply about potential concerns. So you will go through the process of studying each part and the environment around it to be able to tell which part or a side uh, uh, specified property of that part that is considered to be a potential concern. Then you clarify the concerns and causes uh, so that you can prepare for the DRBFM conclusions. And uh, eventually you will discuss through a couple of design review meetings and following the GDQ process, uh, you will discuss those documents deeply with the experts and professionals to be able to come out with recommended actions uh, actively through the process of uh, product development or change uh, establishment to be able to avoid any potential concerns that are expected in the future. Then if I want to show you how does the DRBFM impact your facility or your organization in a, in a better way, how does the design process get better through DRBFM? So you can see here this uh, graph having cases per hundred vehicles and showing you on the x-axis the months. Now you can see how many cases or how many vehicles reported to have problems uh, either before production release or after production release. And it's showing you that the DRBFM is being used uh, in this case. So the, the first orange, red and dark blue lines are the vehicles being reported to have problems before applying DRBFM and the dark green and light blue lines are the number of vehicles reported hang having cases after applying DRBFM. So you can see as moving forward in months how many vehicles are reported are dramatically less uh, than the case when you are not applying any DRBFM so you're having more problems in your vehicles. So in this case, DRBFM doesn't eliminate problems because that's not realistic, but it does reduce the number of problems showing up uh, all the way from deciding on the design and doing the development for the certain product or feature all the way to applying that product and releasing that to the market and to the customers. Now the DRBFM is used along with the targets and the milestones that that company is having. So if you are an organization, you have your team, your team have a certain milestones. Uh, let's say you are designing um, a toothbrush. Now this toothbrush is still in the first, it's a sketch, it's on paper. You used to do the toothbrush in a certain way in the past. Now you want to come up with a new design that you think is highly needed because it's beneficial to the customer or the customers are complaining with the previous design. So you want to come up with a new design. Now you have a timeline in your company organization. And mostly the timeline is divided between development and production. 
development can have a certain different sub milestones and smaller targets moving forward but all going through development you're still nothing serious still you are building uh, your expertise and your designs to be able to deliver a fully developed product and ready to be moved to production and production milestones as well as the same thing so here these milestones are probably uh, I, I can say it's a Toyota specific milestones but you can relate to your company or to your schedule with those milestones so basically you can see here that's the split point between development and production so K4 and SE Ginzo and um, Mod Ginzo and CV evaluation those are pre-production or development uh, milestones then you ha you're having production handover and you are starting with the production uh, milestones so firstly you need to keep something in mind doesn't matter what does your milestone look like you need to be able as moving forward from the sketch stage let's say with the example of the toothbrush from the sketch stage all the way to doing a CAD design all the way to doing initial testing and prototype proof of concept you need to be applying DRBFM from day one all the way down until you have your product released in the market and actively using that each team using their own dedicated DRBFM worksheet to be able to deliver to the quality engineers or the plant managers uh, what's going on with the process of development to be able to land a higher quality products and less problems and less risks by applying the change again we're going with the milestones so uh, drbfm having a level check sheet of drbfm so uh, basically as you're moving from one stage to another you are giving yourself kind of scores how did you do with the with the concerns that showed up in the sketch stage how did you do with this with the stage of development or CAD designs did you resolve all the problems that you guys are suspected or they did you follow the recommendations from the experts and so on so what's the purpose of those uh, kind of measurements firstly you need to measure the quality of DRBFM application which means how good did you follow the process of DRBFM did it uh, is that promising that it will be beneficial for you or no so you have a, a scale of six for scoring with a 0.25 increment as applying the concepts and resolving the problems effectively you give 0.25 increment for each stage and if you fail to do that then you drop 0.25 2.5 for pre-design review uh, anything higher than 2.5 out of 4 is considered a shaded portion and uh, final by uh, the Ginzo release anything higher than 4 out of 6 that's considered a successful DRBFM uh, process application so the whoever is looking over the DRBFM process of course there should be some kind of certified expert who who went through similar training as what we guys are taking together right now so he can guide the process to achieve the target and make sure the DRBFM is applied because misapplying the RBFM will give you a fake results and give you a fake success you think you're doing great while still having the same problem without applying the RBFM so you want to either follow the process as it should be followed or you, it will be a big failure then you you will have uh, he will oversee that expert official level uh, check score reporting he makes sure everything looks fine and the scores are acceptable then you submit uh, um, all the results to the milestone reporting now for DRBFM part selection 100% uh, of the project parts or for the product parts are considered uh, parts included in DRBFM you can't avoid anything then uh, target issue uh, need to be one month after the project start that's where you start your DRBFM but you can start as early as you want as long as there is a material or there's a good visual uh, understanding of the project or of the needed product then you sort the sheet and complete it by the ed1 or es1 week and those again are related milestones related to toyota concept and those abbreviations are followed by toyota but uh, you have your own milestones in your company for sure but those are development milestones um, then you do meetings with the related divisions and to make sure before you kickstart the production, you already scored all your DRBFM 
uh, processes and you're able to tell that you avoided all the potential concerns that may face you along the way.